Eternal Father, I offer you the body and the blood. Hallelujah. Once more, let me take this opportunity to thank God for giving us this time to be in His presence and to share the Word of God. I also welcome you, my viewer, to this platform so that we share the Word together. And God is gracious enough. God is faithful. God is good. He is going to do something good unto us. Bless the name of the, of the, of the Holy and Living God. Today, I want to share a word. But before I share the word, let me first of all identify myself. I am Pastor Samboy. I'm a minister of the gospel, the word of God, in the city of Nairobi. And I do the work of God with a ministry called Cathedral of Praise Ministries International. We are based in Jiru, along Kangundo Road, just behind Ola Energy. We are just behind there, around 150 meters. So, we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Every Sunday, we start our services at 9.30. And we end at 12.30. And may the, 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 the Lord of peace bless each and every one of us. We welcome you come and worship with us. And God, I believe, will bless you tremendously. People have been coming to receive the Lord. And even to drink from the well of the Lord. God bless you so much. I want to go to the Word of God and I want to talk about God comes at the right time. That is the topic I'm going to talk about. But let us pray first before I read the Word of God. Wherever you are, up close your eyes so that you can pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, because of this wonderful day and this wonderful time. You have been so faithful unto us. You have been good unto us. A whole week we have not been together. But Father, you are prepared again another opportunity this moment so that we can share your word again. And I pray that as I am sharing your word with my viewer, Father, I speak your blessings. I speak your protection. I speak your power. I speak your deliverance. I speak your healing. I speak, Lord, that you elevate him, elevate her, O Jehovah King, glory. Father, to a higher level, to another position. I thank you and I bless you today because you are a good God. Lord, be thou glorified, be thou exalted. Let the Holy Spirit also dwell in your word, Father, to give me the utterance and even, Lord, the, the revelation to speak to your people. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and believe. Amen. Wherever you are, I urge you to say Amen. Okay. First of all, let me thank Lolo TV management for giving us this opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, to preach the word of God. And I know that whatever we are doing through Lolo TV will never go in vain. But God is going to do something. God already is doing something to Lolo TV. And I pray for the blessings of God upon this media station and even to the workers and the entire crew who are working tirelessly to make sure that this message reaches all corners of this country. I thank God so much because of the privilege and even also for you as our viewer for coming every Sunday to, to, to listen to the word of God. May Jehovah God exalt you. May Jehovah God lift you up may Jehovah God be glorified because of the work he's doing in your life God bless you so much 
Uh, I've said the topic I want to talk about today. And I want to go to the book of... Uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 19. The Bible is saying this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the, the Lord delivers him out of them all. Or I might say, the Lord delivers him from them all. That is the word of God today from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 19. We have read from the word of God. And these ones were the revelations. The words that the Holy Spirit were revealing to God's servant and God's anointed David. David was a servant of God. He loved God. He was serving God as the king who was ruling over the people of God, the people of Israel. And the Lord anointed him as a young boy who was looking after his father's flock. And when the Lord anointed him to be the king, you know, David didn't, didn't become the king. Immediately he was anointed. But there was a process he was to go through. So he went through that process for years. And because the anointing of God was with him, but the appointed time of God was not yet for him to be on the seat of throne. So this man, his heart was in God immediately. He was anointed. And he started to walk with God and to trust in God and to believe in God. And because of his faith in God and the belief he had in God, Through that, God made him to be somebody very famous and later on became very powerful. Just only because he loved God so much. You know, there are people, after being anointed by God, they forget about the anointing. But they start doing things their own ways. But David was not so. In everything he was doing, he was depending on God. So this is somebody who was fully in God and was with God. So whatever he was doing, he was seeking first the direction from God. He was not just doing things anyhow as David when he did things anyhow as David, he used to go wrong. But when he inquired of the Lord, the Bible is saying that the Lord <clears throat> normally used to answer him. You remember, he did quite a number of things against the will of God. And God rebuked him. And when he was rebuked, this man was very quick to repent and to come back to God. So God loved him because of the heart he had. God loved him because of how he was always in the presence of the Lord. So today, the Bible is talking about the afflictions of the righteous. David was among the righteous of God. And God loves righteousness and he dwells in righteousness. That's why on several books in the Bible, the word righteousness is mentioned several times. 
And even Jesus himself, when he came, he said that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things are going to be added or are going to be given unto you. Whatever you want, whatever you need, once you have sought for this kingdom of God, and together with the righteousness of God, then whatever you want, whatever you desire, whatever you need, the Bible says they are going to be given unto you. What does it mean? It means that with righteousness, there is an opening from heaven. There is an opening that God is going to release his, his, his blessings through to the righteous. So the Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It means that, that <clears throat> even though you can be righteous before the Lord, can be a very righteous man, a good man before the Lord, but the Bible says that, but the afflictions are there. And the afflictions are many, not one. But they are many to somebody who is righteous. And when I talk about the afflictions that are many to somebody who is righteous, what do I mean? I mean that your righteousness is going to attract afflictions. And through the afflictions, it doesn't mean that you are now going to, to get, go out of, of, of the will of God. No. It doesn't mean that you are now supposed to walk away from God. No. Because the righteousness is of God. The righteousness is what God wants from these people. And when you are righteous, then you are going to attract afflictions. So afflictions does, does not come just anyhow, Lee, but they come because of the, of the righteousness that they see in someone. And this righteousness, Matthew, it's of God. Because the, boss, the, God, the, the Bible said that God, God said that, that their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. So when you are righteous before the Lord, and when you see the afflictions coming upon your life, then you should not worry at all, because that is the written word of God, that when you are righteous, then the afflictions are going to come your way, they are going to come in your life, and you are going to walk in the afflictions. Let me tell you, the afflictions are not going to consume you. The afflictions are not going to finish you. The afflictions are not going to remove anything from you. Why? Because the Bible has a promise for this. That even though they are many, even though you are passing through them, the Lord is going to bring a deliverance. He's going to bring his deliverance upon your life. He's going to set you free from the afflictions. There is somebody in the Bible called Job. Job was a righteous man before God. And God knew Job that God that Job is my servant. But you know what? Through righteousness, you resist the devil. Through righteousness, you are you are you are your report reaches heaven. And because the report, it goes to heaven, then the devil comes and kills you because he wants to tarnish your righteousness. He wants to separate you from righteousness. He wants to destroy the righteousness that you, you are having between you and God. He wants to destroy the relationship between you and God. So that is exactly what he did. He came to Job. First of all, before he came to Job, he went to God and, 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 and accused Job before God. 
that this man you're seeing here. Let me tell you, God is the one who asked the devil first. Have you seen my servant Job? My brother, my sister, when you are righteous, God knows you. God sees you. God takes care of you. He asked the devil, Satan, have you seen my servant's job? Satan replied, I've seen your servant's job, but that man loves you because of what you have given him. God did not give, give job whatever he was possessing anyhow, but he gave because of the righteousness of Job. The righteousness of Job attracted the blessings from heaven. Whatever Job was having, whatever he owned, they came from God. They just didn't come from nowhere. God is the one who provided for those things because he saw what was in Job and he decided that right now I'm going to bless him like nobody else on the face of the earth and I'm going to put a hedge around him so that there is no enemy that is going to get access unto his life. God did that because he saw something in Job. So when somebody walks with God, there are things that God is going to put in your life. There are things that God is going to protect in your life. And there are things that God is going to release to come upon your life. Because God has a mission. And the mission of God is to, 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 to bless his people, to, to protect his people, and to walk with his people. But only pers one person who is ready to do that, who is ready to walk with God. Not just everybody, but those ones whose hearts are inclined unto God. God is going to bless them. And it's going to work with them. And it's going to protect them. The righteousness. That you have in your life. Is going to attract an opposition. There is an opposition you are going to attract. Because. Of your righteousness. And when the opposition comes, don't panic. Because God is watching. God is seeing you. Even in the midst of those opposers, you are going to stand with God. And when you stand with God, he is faithful. There are temptations that are going to come upon your life because of your righteousness. And temptations, some of them are going to come that are going to be so powerful and so painful and very enticing. But if you resist them, The Lord is going to see you through. They are going to come in forms of your friends. They are going to come in forms of your relatives. They are going to come in forms of your colleagues. They are going to come in form of your close associates. The temptations. And when they come, it's now upon you to stand firm for the Lord. 
to stand with God and say that I know my God who he is. For Isaiah said that them who wait upon the Lord, the Lord will renew their strength. Sometimes you might be too low. Sometimes you might have passed through so much. Until you say, is there really God? Until you say, those ones who are not committed to God like me are doing so well. Their lives are just straight, moving on smoothly. But mine, it has ups and downs. It has blockages ahead. I can't move freely. Things are so rough in my life. I don't know what to do. Because I believe in God, but I, I'm not seeing God right now. Where is this God? Why can't I receive what is written in the word of God as per the word? Why is my life this way? Why am I always this way? I don't receive what I want. What I receive is the opposite. I pray so much. I fast so much. I call upon the name of the Lord so much. I pray so much. I worship so much. But I don't see anything in my life. What's happening with me? Even though you believe that you are above curses. You believe that you are above witchcraft. You believe that you are above all the things that can be brought by the hands of men. You believe that you are a conqueror. You believe that you are more than a conqueror. You are a winner in the name of the Lord. But still, strange things are still happening in your life. You don't achieve what you want to achieve. Whatever you expect, you don't receive. You pray and fast. Still, they don't come. What's happening? You ask yourself. I have not seen it before the Lord. I'm very faithful before the Lord. I'm doing whatever is supposed to be done. But I'm not seeing the results. I want to tell you today. God's time is the best. The timing of God. When it comes upon someone's life, automatically it has to make changes. It has to come with a breakthrough. It has to come with a power. Power from above. Because it's going to destabilize everything. It's going to change every situation. Whatever has been tough. Whatever you thought is going to finish you. Whatever you thought cannot go, go away from your life. When the Lord turns and remembers that this is my servant, the Lord, when he returns, the Bible says that when he turned the captivity of Zion, when he turned the captivity of Zion. To us it was just like a dream. We couldn't comprehend it well. Because what we have passed through is too much. We passed through much. Even in the hands of our enemies. Until we thought that God has left us. But when God turned the captivity. We were like them who, who, had, who dreamt. We are just dreaming. We couldn't believe that this is God working in us. I want to tell you today, my brother, my sister, that whatever you're passing through, continue to stand for the Lord. Continue to serve God. Continue to walk with God. Don't look at your right or your left, but look straight forward unto the Lord, the author and, and the, the finisher. 
of our faith. He is the one who is faithful and is going to bring a mighty deliverance upon our lives. He's going to touch us and he's going to set us free. He's going to, 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 to come to our rescue at the right time and the enemy is going to be defe defeated because he is just there but for a limited time. But God is going to come at the right time and he's going to destroy all the powers and all the chains that the enemy has been binding the people of God with and you are going to be set free in the name of the Lord because God is faithful what are your afflictions today what are the afflictions you're passing through the Bible is giving us a promise that the Lord is going to bring a deliverance and right now if you believe this word of God I I, I pray that may God bring a deliverance upon your life today in the name of the Lord and if even he brings a deliverance, I know that there's going to be power and a mighty breakthrough in your life. The Lord is going to bring a mighty breakthrough. And I thank God. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to read from the book of Psalms 69, verses 13. But as for me, oh my God, as for me, my prayer is unto you, oh Lord, in an acceptable time. But as, oh hallelujah, thank you Jesus. But as for me, my prayer unto the Lord. Hmm. In an acceptable time. Do you know the acceptable time of the Lord? When you are passed so much. I mean you are passed through so much. So much stuff has happened in your life. And when you pray unto God. As for me. You pray unto God. In an acceptable time. I tell you. The afflictions are going to come. <laughs> Excuse me. They are going to come. But when they come, and when you pray unto God, when you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible is saying that at in the accepted time, the Lord is going to show up. The Lord is going to come unto you. The Lord is going to come to your rescue. He is going to come with blessings. He is going to come with healing powers. He is going to come with deliverance. He is going to come to take you out of every situation you are finding yourself in. Because you are faithful God. I believe you know that God can do exceedingly abundantly above what we think or imagine. So we cannot think of what the Lord can do. We cannot even imagine what he can do. That is the word of God. He is able to give, to do abundantly, exceedingly, above all. Oh, yes. Today, what is your problem before the Lord? What do you think has been pulling you down? That you cannot even move. You are somebody who knows God. You believe in the word of God. You pray, you read the word of God, you preach even the word of God, you share the word, but still things are stuck in your life. They are still stuck in your life. Don't worry. The acceptable time of the Lord has already come. For the Lord to set you free, and to release you so that you receive the power of God, so that you receive the anointing of God, so that you receive the breakthrough and the freedom from the Lord. Because he's able. I want to pray with someone. If you are there, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. If if you are born again, you are, you are not born again, and you like to receive the Lord as your Savior, I want to pray with you right now. 
I want to pray with you. And the Lord is going to see you through. Hallelujah. Can you bow down your heads and close your eyes as you are going to pray? And I want you to repeat as I'm going to say. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I surrender my life to you. I want you to save me. Save my soul. Set me free from the law of sin. Deliver me from the hands of the enemy. Write my name in the book of life. I take away my name from the book of death. I thank you because of saving me. I'll serve you and I'll follow you. In your holy name I pray. Say Amen. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, for my viewer this hour and this moment. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever my viewer has been passing through, whatever has been going on in their lives, Father, I pray this morning that your power and your glory to be upon them. Let your touch touch them, O Lord. Let your power deliver them and set them free. Give them freedom right now. And Father, I know that you are faithful. You are going to do it and you are going to perform it. In Jesus' mighty name I pray and believe. Amen. If you pray, you've prayed that prayer of salvation, I urge you to look for a good church. By saying a good church, I mean somewhere where people are saved and are born again. And they believe in the whole Bible, including infilling of the Holy Spirit. Look for that church where you can be taught the word of God and you can stand and be grounded and serve God well. And God bless you so much. I've said my name, Pastor Samboy. God bless you so much. My numbers are here. 0722 944 or 0731 Both Safaricom and Airtime. And God bless you. Shalom. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you.